and I had my experience with God five years ago in the community. And ever since I've been trading a path of intimacy with God, so that one day I happen to discover my vocation inside of the community and to discover my life inside of the community. And most of it was because I felt I wasn't a family. A great part of it was because I felt I wasn't a family. And I'll be talking to some, I'll, I won't do this right now because around the preaching, I'll be going into some points and some situations where I knew that I was a family with the community, that I was a family with the church. So you get to know this better. This preaching, it has like, a, the basis of it is a passage from the Acts of the Apostles, which happens right after Pentecost. In Pentecost, the Holy Spirit comes and there is an experience that which I always find it beautiful. And when we come to a group like this, when we have so many different people, it like, for me, it shines the beauty of it even more, which is when the apostles receive the Holy Spirit, they begin to pray in tongues and everyone begins to listen in their own tongue. So the church is this place where God speaks in a familiar tongue to each and every one of us. And I believe that many of you are here because you have heard God speaking to you in this familiar way. And this is something very beautiful. So I read the passage to you so that we can move on to the more specific points. Uh, the, the very title of the passage in the Bible is The Life Among the Believers, which is the life that happens after the people receive the experience of the Holy Spirit. If you want to accompany your Bibles, it's in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, from verses 42 to 47. And they held steadfastly to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they sold their possessions and goods and distributed them to all as any had need. And day by day, attending to the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they partook of food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the number day by day those who are being saved. Uh, this is of the Pope Francis, when it was in 2019, Pope Francis did a series of catechesis in the, on the Acts of the Apostles. And Pope Francis said that the Holy Spirit is the architect of communion. That is, the Holy Spirit is the builder of this family. I, after the Pentecost, after everyone hears God speaking in this familiar way, and Peter gives like that big speech with around like 3,000 people were converted for the speech of Peter. Everyone was like, what can we do to be saved? And Peter proposes to them the way of baptism. But in this way, they really, what he really does is propose a family propose a fellowship, a place where they can live together this experience which they just had. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the apostles, the outpouring of the concrete experience with the love of God makes us become a family. It's the bond of unity. It's the very, the very thing that binds us together. For example, I cannot find another explanation for we being in a group with people from China, from Tanzania, from Malaysia, from anywhere around the globe, if there is no bond, there has to be a bond. And among us, this bond has a name. The bond of his new family is the Holy Spirit of God. And this bond, St. Paul says, that the bonds of the Spirit are stronger than the bonds of the flesh. So we experience through the experience with the love of God, a bond which is completely new. And they have this great experience of being a new family. Uh, 
it's very touching how they say that when the Acts of the Apostles talks about the experience which they had you know, with listening in their own tongues, it talks about, they talk about many people, people from many different countries, from many different places. And uh, in Israel, this was not common because the family was the people of God, the people of Israel. But the bonds of the Holy Spirit, they stretch out this family. They stretch out the family because this family is now the body of Christ, is the church. It's meaningful to be talking about this in a day where many countries are celebrating the solemnity of the body of Christ, Corpus Christi. No. Here in Brazil, it's celebrated on Thursday, but God, in God's providence, we can celebrate it twice. There's no problem. <laughs> so it's a fantastic opportunity to see us at, as this body of Christ. And this bond knows no distance. It knows no distance. Like I know that, for example, there may be some of you which I am never going to meet you personally. I'm never going to get to hug you or to shake your hand or whatever. But that's, that does not make the bond any weaker. Because the bond comes from God. The bond is the very Holy Spirit, the very foundation of unity. And the Holy Spirit, St. Augustine used to say that the, Trin the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were a relationship of love. Where God is the lover, the Christ is the beloved and the Holy Spirit is love itself. So the same love that binds the Holy Trinity together is the love that binds us together as a family. And this experience is something in which we can always keep growing. Like this new family know that they have to grow in the knowledge of Christ. They have to grow in the knowledge of this bond. And that's why, for example, in, in this new Shalom family, we come to group every Sunday because the first communities held steadfastly to the teachings of the apostles. They held steadfastly to this place where they knew that they can emerge themselves in the experience which they were having. Like, they begin to feel something new. They begin to have the experience of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. They begin to feel propelled to share their goods, to sell everything, to give everything. And sometimes you feel the impulse, but you just don't really know why. And you really have to grow in this relationship. That's why we pray, and that's why they held to the teachings of the apostles. That's why we come here. When I had my experience with God, I had it in my birthplace in Natal when I was on vacation. But at the time, I studied in Portugal. And in the city in which I lived, there was no shalom. So I had to go like two and a half hours to the north or two and a half hours to the south to find a place which had shalom. So I didn't have prayer. At the time, we didn't have online prayer groups. So like, you guys are favored by technology. I wasn't. And I had the experience of having to go there many times. And But the thing is, Every time I didn't get to go, either because I didn't have money or because I was swapped up with studies or I just didn't want to go on that, on that day, I felt the absence. I felt the absence of, the, of this place where this experience got to grow some, some way more concrete. So of knowing Christ better because this experience with the Holy Spirit shows us that the growth of the experience of Christ is something we do in a family. It's something we do in the body of Christ, in the church. We cannot go at it alone. We can't just simply, <laughs> we can't just simply try to roll against the current alone because God created us to be a family. God, the, Christ says that he has a body, that we are the members of the body of Christ. I am the vine, you are the branches. Remain in me. So we, are, we were made to remain in this family. And that's why, for example, I didn't understand 
when the the coordinator of my group she kept saying no but you have to come every week you have to come every saturday you have to come every saturday well, i was like why why do i have to come every saturday i don't have to come every saturday but when the when the experience began to grow i began to feel the need inside because in the Christ is a never-ending fountain. So the more you get to know, the more you want to know. It's not, it's not something that like we can say, oh, no, no now I, I know everything there is to know about Christ. That doesn't exist. No. <laughs> we really have to grow in this experience and in this knowledge of Jesus. And this new family is the place to grow in this knowledge. The family of the church and also the family of this group, because this is a family that God gave you. I know that you, you could have been anywhere in the globe. You could, have do, you could have been doing something else. You could have been sleeping. It's a time on, on Sunday with, in which many people are sleeping. I would as well if I wasn't here. <laughs> this is a place which God has given us to grow in this knowledge of Christ. And... It puts us in the most unlikely of families because it joins together people from many different places. But not only this, it puts us in the new quality of family because they were, the, those who believed were together and had all in common. Like they had everything in common. If I grow, if, if I like, but this experience to the experience of my family. I used to be very selfish with my family. So I, many times I didn't know what it was like to have all everything in common with my family. For example, before I had my experience with God, I traveled a lot and I did a lot of stuff. My mother knew nothing. But when I had my experience with God, I felt propelled to share with my mother everything I did because there needed to be no secrets because the bond of the Holy Spirit was stronger than my blood, than my blood bond. My blood bond did not propel me to tell the truth to my mother, but the spirit bond did. So I shared with her everything that I did because there needed to be no secrets because I, I wanted her to be a part of my life because she was a part of my life in God. My mother is from the Shalom community as well. She's Calvin community. So she came before me in the vocation a long time. She tried to evangelize me for around 10 years, got nothing. And, but the spirit bond did what the blood bond didn't do in many years. So we, we experienced a new quality of bond, a new quality of family. It's a family where I don't have to be afraid to share. I don't have to be afraid to share the work that God is doing in my life. Of course, I won't be an open book and share everything to everyone because <laughs> we know that there are limits and there are, there are things that are particular. But this is a place where we feel free. Like the same way that I can tell you of the joy that besides you guys, I received a new prayer group this week in the mission. So like I had two prayer groups. I had none. So this is a real joy. And I can, I can share this, but I can also share that my, my grandma had some health issues with the medicine she was taking to prevent COVID-19. And she, it was all a very big mess. And this like mess, mess with my head a lot because I'm far away. But you see that this is the type of family where, where for example, in my WhatsApp group, in my prayer group, I have the liberty to say what is going on in my life and people actually care because this bond is new. Our world is very much marked by indifference, by people who say, oh, how's it going, buddy? They really don't want to know how's it going. They're just saying this to be polite. But generally in your prayer group, when someone asks you how's it going, they really want to know how's it going. <laughs> and this is something so good because we are in the new, this new family of Christ where we are called to have everything in common, including our lives, including what we live. And for example, in, in Shalom, I don't know if you, if you guys have any of these sort of things in your pastoral groups, in your countries, but 
in Shalom, we have a figure in the group, which is a missionary or an older brother, which is going to accompany you in this way of faith. And with this dude, you're going to be able to share like literally everything because he's going to, he's, he or she is going to help you in this spiritual path. And the things that you cannot share in the group, you can share with this person. So th this family of Christ gives you the means to share everything in your life and to feel that you are not alone. If you see the believers in the first communities were not alone. Like they, they even prompted an atheist historian called Tertullian to say, look at how they love each other. The way that they lived, the way that they shared, prompted him to say, look at how they love each other. And this, this was not common. This way of sharing that we have is a bond of love that to the world is a scandal. Because we live in the world of two extremes. We either expose everything we have in our lives on social media or we expose nothing. But now we have a place where we can share our lives freely, freely. For example, uh, I had the missionary who accompanied me when I was in Portugal, Edgar. Like, I, sometimes I didn't, I didn't want to go to Braga or I didn't have the money to go to Braga, which, which is the place where the mission was. But he called me every time. Like, on, on Sundays, he either called me or shot me, shot me a message. And he was like, hey, how are, you how are you doing? How's it going? Is everything all right? Why, am, why are you not coming? And sometimes I felt like, dude, leave me alone please <laughs> can i just not want to come but there was a person who in this new bond of the holy spirit was genuinely worried about me and i was not used to it <laughs> i was not at all used to it the only person who worries about me this much is my mother so i, <laughs> I wasn't used to a missionary doing this but after the experience after this this whole thing began to grow inside of me and I began to have this need of more. I was like, God, thank you. Because you, you did not leave me alone. You gave me someone with whom I can share. And he knew like basically everything that was going on in my life. I was like, Edgar, this exam is very hard. Pray for me. Like, I don't know how I'm going to pass my French final. So please, please pray for me. I hate French. For those of you who don't know, I don't like French at all, but it was like very difficult for me. And I was like, Edgar, pray, pray for me. I had my French final. Or Edgar, pray for me. I have an issues with my family. From the deep stuff to the stuff that is not so deep, we have a place where we can share everything. We can have everything in common. Where we can have, a, have in common the things that brings us to holiness. This good movie that I watched that I knew... The, Dude, this, this drawn me so much closer to God, so I'm going to share with you guys. This good podcast that I listened, this good band that I discovered, everything that leads me to, me to holiness is a good that we can share among each other and make each other stronger and push forward in this way towards holiness. The good thing about having this family is you're never alone and you're not walking towards holiness alone. You're walking towards holiness with a group of people that, is as much driven as you are. And we're not as much driven as you are. You can drive them forward. We can drive each other forward because there, is, there are going to be times where I'm not going to be so motivated, but you're going to be. And you can motivate me and, and I can be touched by the work that God is doing in your life. Sometimes like I'm, I'm really going through some bad stuff, but you come to me and share, hey, I was praying this week and God told me this and this and that. And this was so fantastic. And this work that God is doing in my life, for my prayer life, oh my God, this is changing me so much. I used to be like this and now I'm, and now I'm acting like that. And when you begin to, share, begin to share those things, the people around you, they begin to get touched by this experience and motivated by this experience. Because, for example, if this happened to Gordon, why wouldn't it happen to me if I pray as well? No, if Cindy got this experience with God, why can't I get this experience with God too? So I can trail the same path that they are. And they begin to share whatever they had and in a path of intimacy. Like it's, 
Uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but when the Holy Eucharist begins, it was, it was not celebrated in churches or temples, but it was, I think the deacon probably know this more than me, so I'm just very humbled to talk to you about this kind of stuff. But uh, when the Holy Eucharist began, it was celebrated in people's homes. So like you invited the older people to your home to break the bread. So this being a family is also inviting people to your home. It's inviting people to your life, to the, the things that maybe sometimes they are difficult to share, but sometimes they are just what you need. Sometimes you need to share what God's doing so that you can take possession of it. Because sometimes when you don't share, it becomes something in the air and something that is not very concrete. But when you grasp it in your hand and you say it to someone, you are taking the responsibility for the work. So it is a very good thing. Pope Francis also said that closeness and unity are the style of the believers, the lifestyle of the believers, and that they are close and concerned for each other. And this concern is what propels another bond of unity, which is intercession. We pray for each other. This is part of the lifestyle of those who believe in Christ. Because if one part of the body is wounded, the whole body is wounded. Like if, if I have a wound in my leg, that does not make me immune in any other part of my body. I feel the pain. In <laughs> my body feels the pain as a whole. My body feels debilitated. If a virus, for example, I know this is not a very good example, but if, if a body gets COVID-19, the whole body gets COVID-19. It's not something that gets isolated. If I'm a cell of this body and, I'm, and I have COVID-19, so I have it. And this gives me a responsibility to apply the medicine to the whole body. And we have a medicine that is very unique. And we have like the doctor of doctors, which is Jesus Christ. And... Once we receive him, we have the responsibility to apply this medicine, not only to our lives, but to the lives of our brothers. Through prayer, like this, in, in this week, like spontaneously in the WhatsApp group, we begin to share some situations about our life. I shared something, Sophia shared something. And this generates a movement where we begin to feel concerned with each other. And this concern is something that is very, like, very unique of the bonds of the Holy Spirit. The bonds of the Holy Spirit, they break the walls of indifference. Like once, once we are in this family right here, it's, it's not like you know one to me. You've never been no one to me. You're someone and not just someone, you're someone I care about, you're someone I pray for. This is what being family, our family has been about. And this being a family with the prayer group, sometimes to some of us is also a path of healing. Because not all of us had good experience with our families. And this may be also a place where God heals something inside of you. By being this family, where we share everything, where we pray together, where we pray for each other. Like, and it becomes a need. Like, I feel that, I know that Sophia is, but I, then again, if I don't share, I close this gate. For example, if, if Sophia hadn't shared what was going on with her, I probably wouldn't be prompted to share what was going on with me. But once someone starts the current, the others follow. The others follow. So we have to start this current of faith. And when we start this current of faith and prayer, we experience the power of intercession. Jesus said, you, many things that you ask to the Lord, you had not attained because you didn't ask in my name. Everything you ask in my name to the Father, you shall receive it. So we are the family binded, bound by the Holy Spirit, which asks things in the name of Christ. Because he is the bond of our unity. So we come to Christ and say, Christ, please help Sophia. She's going through some stuff. Or Christ, please help Deacon Carol with his studies, with the path that he's trailing. Or God, please give Sham and carry Shay light in the vocational discernment path. Like 
like exactly like the moment that we had in the end of the prayer, where Barbara was motivating the prayer for you, you guys. This is very unique of this new bond. And we adhere to it. Like, not because, and nothing here is like, oh my God, now I have an obligation to go to the prayer group. If I don't go to the prayer group on Sunday, I'm a sinner. If I don't play to, for my brothers, I'm a sinner. This is not like this. Like, nothing, nothing out of this God that happened in the Acts of the Apostles. It happened because either you were a sinner or you're not. This, this is not the logic. The logic is, Pentecost is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The love within the Holy Trinity is something so big and so strong that these tongues of fire end up flying through the hearts of the spirits and not and through the, the disciples. They end up flying through the hearts of all mankind. The expression that they use about the people who heard the prayers of the disciples after Pentecost is that they had their hearts pierced by the word. They had their hearts pierced by the love of God, pierced by the fire of the Spirit. And we are this family, pierced by the fire of the Spirit. We begin to live something new. And we are this new family. And we begin to distribute our goods and possessions as the others have need. So the focal point of this family is not just me, it's the needs of the family. So the family needs my prayer. The family needs my presence. The family misses my presence when I'm absent. So when you, when you don't come to group, don't blame me for missing you. <laughs> I'm expecting you to come. You're part of the family. So I'll miss you. It's natural. We're part of a family. No, it's natural that we, that we miss each other. It's not, I know that sometimes we're like, but why is this strange dude from Brazil missing me? Well, like we have nothing to think about, but we're a family. We're a family bound by the Holy Spirit. And this, this makes, makes it natural. I know that something like this may, may sound to many very dreamy or very like, oh, but, it, but reality is not like that. But I can only talk to you about what I have touched, about what I have experienced with the community so far. This was something very beautiful. Like uh, when I was studied in Portugal, I lived away from my family. Like my whole family lived in Brazil. I had no one in Portugal. I went there just to study. And uh, many of the holidays, I spent them in the life community house. Like Christmas, Easter. I went everything. Any excuse I had to go there, <laughs> I went there. You know? And I found the bond, the bond of the Holy Spirit, the bond of the life in Christ, something so amazing. Every time I got there, it was like a party. They were like expecting me. And they were like, oh, but let's do this and let's do that. Let's take, let's take part in our community prayers. Let's pray the Lord with us. And I was like, oh my God, I really want to do that. <laughs> they, but it was all because this new bond was surging in me. And this bond, which grows in my life of intimacy with Christ. Christ is the very one who asks me every day to break, the bread, to break the bread in my house. Through the Holy Eucharist, through the web. I know that many of us are not being able to attend the Holy Eucharist in presence. I, for example, am not. But he comes to my house every day. He said in the apocalypse, no, I am knocking at your door. If you open the door, we'll have dinner together. I know these are not the exact words, but <laughs> the, meaning, the meaning is this. He wants to be with us, and he's the bond of this new family. And when I welcome him into my home every day, I am able to welcome my brothers and sisters as well. When I pray, and he's there with me every day in my home, I'm like, Jesus, wait a second. I have to invite someone to live this as well. I think, Jesus, you're saying this. Hold on a second. I think Sham would like to listen to this as well. I think Carmela would, would make some good use of this. So let me grab him too. Let me grab him home with me. Home to my experience with God. 
home to my experience with Christ, home to the fire of the Holy Spirit. It's like this home is the place where you are sitting in the couch with Jesus and the Holy Spirit is the fire and crackling in the fireplace. Like that noise which makes him immerse in the conversation with Jesus. And this noise also makes you open the door. Because if you open the door to your brothers and sisters, your whole prayer group is involved in this. We are a family in our prayer life as well. In this place where my prayer life, in so far, we know that there are things, that, in, a, in, very, in every good friendship, we have secrets. So there are like things that I talk to Jesus that I'm just not going to share everything. But there are things I talk to Jesus that everyone needs to hear about how he loves me about how he's transforming my life. And this makes us become a family even more. Because when we share our prayer life, our experience with Jesus Christ, we make the bond stronger. The bond that binds us, it becomes stronger every time we share, every time we share in the group, every time we search for the means available to live this way, the missionaries in particular, uh, Many of us, like Barbara, me, Luana, many other missionaries that have passed here, like we all had this experience. And because we had this experience, we are here with you. And we also invite you to count on us. Like we want you to trail this path, which is a path of intimacy with God, which is a path of intimacy with your brothers and sisters, with the church, with the word of God. We, we also, we keep inviting you. That's why we come every Sunday. That's why we pray every Sunday. Because we have found the treasure of our lives. Like God said in the end of the prayer, we have found within what we have searched everywhere else. And we want you to find it too. That's why you can rely on us. That's why you can talk to us every time you need. You can talk to each other. We, we are free to talk to each other. Expect me to talk to you at some point of time <laughs> to know how you are and what's going on. This is natural. This, I know this may not be natural according to the worldview that we are receiving nowadays from society. But this is natural of this new bond. When we have the experience with Jesus Christ and with the Holy Spirit, sometimes it, it takes a long time to get it but we are living something new. We are living a new life. And this, this new life gives me new friends, new possibilities, a new life of intimacy with Christ, which prompts new actions. Everything's new. Like C.S. Lewis, the author of the Chronicles of Narnia and many other books, like he has a, a phrase which touches me very much. He says like life, the days go by and I feel nothing, but when I look back, I see that everything has changed. So life in Christ sometimes is like this. In this new family, things be begin to become natural. Sharing begins to become natural. And sometimes when you are doing it in your, da in your daily basis, you don't, you don't really understand. But when you look back after some time and you see, my God, this changes everything. Everything changed. I'm, I'm, I'm just not the same. And this is not bad. This is, uh, this is awesome. <laughs> because I'm a new creature in God. You know? And a new creature which is part of a new family. And this is fantastic. Let me just say, if I took something else from Pope Francis here. I'm always looking at my note gu notes, guys, so that I try not to get lost. But the missionaries of the community they in some ways fills the function of the apostles like they had the experience and because they had the experience they shared what did the apostles do after the experience of the pentecost they broke up they broke the closed doors and began to share with everyone it was a great experience of sharing they shared the experience they had they shared the praises of the lord what god was doing in their lives and they taught. 
That's why, for example, we have a moment of prayer and a moment of formation in, in this new family. Because around this family, we grow in the knowledge of Christ. And the missionaries of the community are the instruments that God gives us to like, make us live this new family in the way that it's supposed to be, in the way that God wants it to be. It's not like an imposition. As much as I, I thought this in the beginning, I think you are better people than I, I, I thought this in the beginning. I don't know, why, why, why is this one ahead of me? I'd I rather have someone else. But they were very wise. And not because like they were really intelligent people or doctors on theology, or, but because they are living this experience longer than I am. Even in the community, Barbara and I have people who have been living this experience longer than we have. That teaches, that informs us, that forms us. We, we never stop living this experience. The same experience that we live in a prayer group, it continues in the community and it continues in the way, and it will continue until the rest of our lives, until we are living in heaven. Because we were made to live in this family. And this family progresses with time, but its, it's structure doesn't change. We always have people to accompany us. And you can seek those people. You can seek those people when you have the need to talk to someone about something that is more sensitive, about something that's going on in your life, or when you need guidance. Or when, you, for example, you stop to do your Lexa Divina to pray with the word, but you didn't understand something. You can ask for help to your brothers. You can ask for help to help from us. And we are here to help you. It's our pleasure to help you. We gave our life to help you. <laughs> so for us, is, yeah, it's something that is exactly what we were made for, to be a part of this family. Uh, when Barbara asked me to join the group, it was a fantastic experience because I, I wasn't, really counting on it i wasn't really expecting it in any way like i used to give english classes in the formation house in the discipleship like help the covenant community brother who gave the classes and i went through a path that i was like really detaching myself from it i was like oh okay god you don't want to use this right now so but the this is also the means that god gave me to share with you it's sharing everything. It's sharing my gifts. Like Richie shared his song on the last group, those of us who are here. No, everyone can share his gifts. Like if you draw or if you have a, a gift with arts, if you write something, you, know, you can also share in the group. We share everything. We have everything in common. Everything that God gives us, we share. And in this new family, the more we share, the more we grow. The more we share with the people that accompany us, with the missionaries, the more we give, give them our doubts. And maybe they don't always have the answers, but they will, have, they will pray with you and help you seek the answers. Because like none of us knows it all, only God knows it all. But we are here to help you find the answers to your questions, to point you to the way of Christ. And that, that's what the missionaries are always going to do. And we are a new family, bound by the Holy Spirit, sharing everything, praying for each other. We are the new, this new family, which has all the brothers and sisters who are going to help you in this way. And who, are, who will try with claws and teeth to keep you in this way, <laughs> to keep you in the experience of Christ. And I thank God of those who struggled for me so that I can be here today with you guys. Uh, I thank God for you guys, which is the, this new family which God has given me in this new time, so rare time that we're living in the world, everyone locked up in their homes, but you are this new family which God has given me and I'm very thankful for being able to be here and to share with you guys about this new experience of family, which I live every day, which I try to live every day, sharing with my brothers and sisters in my house, sharing with my formators 
which are the people who are responsible for accompanying me in my spiritual path and in my human path as well to help me overcome my sins and my difficulties. Uh, this family has a place for you. It always has a place for you. It has a place for your joys and it has a place for your sorrows as well. We have a place for everything that is generally, genuinely yours. There is a place in this family for this because the Holy Spirit binds us together. And this bond is the strongest thing that you will experience in your life because it is a bond of fire that melts our imperfections and binds us together. Okay? So, amen, guys. This is it.